Welcome back to this course on fundamentals of computer architecture. In this lesson I will explain how the performance of a program can be measured. To give an example of how computer performance is presented in the press, here is a figure and some text that I copied from a website of Intel. It shows the spec in 2006 performance of two Atom processors, the C2750 and the S1260. Spec 2006 is a set of benchmarks that measure integer and floating point performance of a processor. It contains 12 integer benchmarks that mainly process integers and 17 floating point applications <coughs> that mainly process floating point applications. All these benchmarks are compute intensive, meaning that they demand a lot of computing and perform very little, if any, input-output operations. As a result, they mainly measure CPU and memory performance. Here's another figure that doesn't show performance, but performance per watt. How many operations can be performed in one watt of power? It does so for the LINPACK benchmark, a program that performs double precision factor and matrix operations. This benchmark is often used by the High Performance Computing or HPC community to measure the number of floating point operations per second or flops of a processor or coprocessor. There are several aspects of computer performance. The most important one still is time. Time also has several aspects. The first is response time or latency or execution time. This is the time between the start and the end of an event or a task or a program. The unit of measure here is for example seconds. The second aspect of time is throughput or rate. This is the rate of processing work. For example, a computer system is able to perform n jobs per second. Other aspects of computer performance are availability, the percentage of time a system is up and running, scalability, the ability of a system to expand performance, performance per watt, the number of flops per watt of power as seen before, etc. But the most important aspect of computer performance is still time and we are going to focus on that. But even something simple as measuring execution time is open for multiple interpretation. Do we measure the wall clock time, that is the elapsed time? This includes everything, disk accesses, I.O., operating system overhead, etc. But almost all CPUs are multi-programmed, meaning that the CPU works on another process when the current process is stalled waiting for I.O. Multi-threading is illustrated in this figure. The blue boxes denote time when process P1 is executing, the white boxes represent time two other processes, P2 and P3, are executing. Multithreading does not improve the execution time of the current process, but it does improve the throughput, meaning the rate at which processes are executed. For that reason, when we talk about the time a program takes, we mean the CPU time. The time the CPU is computing, not the time waiting for I.O. or running other programs. This completes this lesson. Thank you for watching. In the next lesson, I will discuss benchmarks, which are computer programs used to evaluate the performance of a computer system. Hope to see you back.